G'day, it's Mark again, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that uh, subscribe button in the lower right-hand side of the screen, and uh, please give the video a, a thumbs up, a like, because it definitely helps the channel, helps more enthusiasts uh, see the content. And uh, also love to hear your comments. You know, I do read every comment and I try to reply to every comment as well. So today we're gonna to talk about my 1966 Dodge Monaco. Uh, I'd been on the search for one of these for uh, quite a while. I'd always really liked the, uh, the look of the 66 Monaco. That sort of filler shave razor type grill uh, with that sort of almost dog bone sort of design. I thought that was, yeah, it looked really nice and clean. Uh, Elwood Engel, he was the designer for the car. Very, again, crisp, clean design. A big, uh, tr you know, big change from the early 60s and late 50s Chrysler products. I like those too. But uh, Elwood Engel, after doing the 61 Lincoln, uh, he moved over to uh, Chrysler Corporation as their chief designer and uh, was very influential in a lot of the cars that, um, you know, he, was, he would design. So things like Plymouth Furies, uh, you know, and these, the 66 Monaco. So the things that really appealed to me about the Monaco were the clean design, that squared formal look, uh, as I said, the grill, the front grill, but also love the taillights. The taillights really sold me on the car. I just think they look absolutely fantastic. You know, big taillights, they all light up at night as well. And uh, they really look terrific. In uh, the coupe, I quite like that cantilever roof design. Mine's not a uh, coupe, mine's a sedan. And I bought the car, I think I bought it out of maybe New Jersey or Pennsylvania, I can't exactly remember. There's always a risk buying cars from those sort of areas, you know, with a lot of salt on the road and you get rust and corrosion. Luckily enough though, this car was a really nice example. It had been repainted and also the interior trim had been redone, but it was really nicely done. And uh, <clears throat> so I bought the car, I stored it at uh, my friend, uh, or near my friend Murray Park's place at uh, Ohio. And uh, then I flew across and uh, I drove the car across America. And uh, it's a 383 big block and performance is really good. No emissions on 1966 cars, as far as I'm aware, I don't think there were any. Uh, so you get really good performance, uh, no pinging or anything on the, uh, on the fuel the unleaded fuel, and um, <clears throat> I did put a fuel additive in it as I drove across the states. But I drove that uh, 66 Monaco, you know, from Ohio up to Detroit, you know, across to St. Louis, down through uh, Colorado, uh, you know, I think it was Montana, you know, across, you know, Nevada, uh, up through the, uh, the is it the High Sierras, you know, the mountains there and then um, drove it down to, uh, or over to San Francisco, uh, where I shipped it back. And uh, what a fantastic car. Like, um, if you check out the channel, you'll also see my uh, road trip video on my 71 Imperial. And equally, I don't know if it's a Mopar thing or not, but I've done a few road trips across America in uh, various cars. And uh, 71 Imperial didn't give me any grief. And likewise, the 66 Dodge Monaco, no problem at all kept up with uh, modern traffic without any problem. It just didn't miss a beat. Uh, power assisted four wheel drum brakes. You just got to allow enough stopping distance when you're driving, but generally you're on freeways anyway, so you've got good distance uh, between other vehicles. And, you know, it's an older car, so you drive it accordingly. But having said that, plenty of times when I drove through, I remember St. Louis driving through there in peak hour traffic, lots of cars all around me, you know, doing fairly high speeds. And the 66 Monaco just kept up with the traffic, not a problem whatsoever. Beautiful instrument panel, love the dashboard on those cars. You know, really, really looks good. Those big binnacles, you know, they look they look terrific. Uh, very comfortable, got the vent windows to let, um, you know, ventilation in there. Doesn't have air conditioning on or anything like that. But the time of year I was driving was uh, fall, you know, which is autumn and um, it was quite mild sort of temperature. Um, so yeah, really, really good. So. Drove that car across the States, brought it back to uh, to Australia, and uh, it's in, now part of the collection. Definitely won't sell it. And uh, yeah, just a terrific car. So, you know, I'd highly recommend, you know, if you are in the market for a, you know, mid-60s American car, sedan or coupe, 
you know, you can't go too far wrong if you look at a, a 66 Monaco, you know, really terrific car. Yeah, so the trip went off without a hitch, uh, but one thing I did see, you know, I was traveling with Fletch, uh, I was filming his classic Restos TV show, and uh, he was following me in, uh, I think it was a Ford Expedition, but we came across in uh, Wyoming this uh, terrible accident that had happened with uh, a locomotive. There was a runaway train. Apparently two of the train drivers were killed and uh, it was just a scene of de complete devastation and just something you just never expected to see out in the middle of nowhere. So it was pretty sobering to see that. Um, yeah, so sort of definitely was a sad thing to see along the way. So thanks very much for watching. I uh, really appreciate everyone's comments. As I said, please give uh, the video a, uh, a thumbs up and uh, make sure you subscribe. Hit that subscribe button in the right, bottom right-hand corner and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.